was that? <laughs> yeah. This opening caught me completely off guard. Like, the first thing I said was, Oh god, they're starting off with a dead horse. This will not be a happy game. And boy, was I right. <laughs> hey there, this is Mega Blade J, and today I'm going to review the third game in the last Bible trilogy. And because I can't think of a better intro than... Here is my review of Megami Tensei Gaiden Last Bible 3. Last Bible 3 was published and released by Atlas on March of 95 for the Nintendo Super Famicom. It was created by a Japanese company called Multimedia Intelligence Transfer, which honestly sounds more like a company that specializes in like brain switching technology more than making games. But it turns out MIT <laughs> were the ones who made the previous two last Bible games. Their website is still up, but it doesn't look like they made anything since Dimmy Kids on the GBA. From what I can tell, this game takes place in the same world as Last Bible 2, just many, many centuries in the future. There are names and references to past games, but playing them is not needed to understand this game's story. Oh right, a story. The story does start off nice enough. Fifteen years ago, there was a bloody war over a limited energy source, resulting in thousands dying. That was until a machine was made that produced an unlimited amount of power and ended the war. In present day, we meet our main character Ciel, the son of a renowned war hero. Ciel lives a pretty peaceful life. He does chores, goes to magic school, explores monster-filled ruins, befriends soul-stealing chickens, and killer robots. You know, normal kid stuff. That is, until one day, his father's past catches up to him. This results in Ciel and his younger brother, Rudy, who is the most adorable and pure-hearted creature in this world, and I will f***ing stab anyone who tries to take away his smile. <laughs> okay, fine, fine, I'm cool, I'm fine. <clears throat> right, uh, so, so, sorry, I really like this character. <clears throat> but, y yeah, uh, the two get separated from their parents. As they search for their family, they explore the world, make and lose many friends, and are forced to grow up fast as they stumble on a dark conspiracy and learn the horrible truth about the war. This is definitely the longest game, and in my opinion, the best story in the trilogy. It may irritate some people with the slow start and just how much dialogue there is, but I really do appreciate the time to get to know the characters and build up the world. That way, when the bad things do happen, you really feel for the characters. And boy, do the bad things happen. Despite the horse thing, this game is not nearly as dark as the mainline Megami Tensei games. The last Bible series was a bit more kid-friendly in comparison. They're set in a medieval fantasy world and had simpler storylines and character motivation. The first game did use some religious imagery and names of important Christian characters, but didn't go deeper than that. I don't want to spoil anything, but the game has its depressing moments. I played a lot of RPGs over the years and Many do the same thing with their characters. Most of the time, I don't really feel anything, but this game, it made my jaded gamer heart actually feel sad. I, I think it's due to the amount of dialogue that 
really fleshes out the characters. When bad things do happen, it actually feels like a loss. It's actually really impressive. Not a lot of games can make me feel things. Like I said, it's not the darkest RPG I've played, but for an SNES game that was meant for smaller children, well, I could see a younger me needing a hug and possibly therapy after playing this game. Okay, uh, enough, enough sad stuff. Let's talk about the gameplay. The game is your typical JRPG. It plays from a top-down view, you can talk to NPCs, explore towns and dungeons, and fight with monsters. Battles play similar to the previous two games. They're first-person view, turn-based, and you can use physical and magic attacks to defeat your foes. The series Monster Recruiting System returns and allows you to befriend and recruit monsters to fight by your side. Like the previous games, you need to convince the monsters to join you by a conversation system. They will ask you a series of questions, and depending on what you answer, they may join, give some money or items, or get ticked off and attack you. Every monster is different. One answer that satisfied one beast will throw another into a rage. There are a decent number of questions, and it will take some trial and error for you to figure out how to answer each one. Eventually, you will gain the ability to fuse two beasts together to form a stronger one. Unlike the previous two games, monsters can level up and become stronger without fusing, but as far as I can tell, they have a pretty low level cap, so fusing should still be your main method of getting stronger monsters. And just like Last Bible 2, beasts can be equipped with items, such as weapons and armor. I still don't recommend giving them any, unless you plan to keep them for a while or preparing for a major boss. This is because if you forget to remove them, you will lose any item a beast has when they fuse. One good thing is that they finally fixed the inventory and menu system. You no longer need to go through one billion different menus. They've been simplified and it speeds up buying and selling items by a ton. It really amazes me what a huge difference such a small quality of life improvement makes to the overall enjoyment of the game, but holy crap it does! The art direction is different than the last two games and looks more cartoony and goofy to me. It's not a bad thing exactly. The overworld and dungeons still look good and battle sprites are big and colorful. I just prefer the more anime look of the old games. Now, the music. Oh man, the music is absolutely fantastic. It was made by this person whose name I'm not even gonna try to pronounce, who also composed for the first two games. You know, playing modern systems, I always forget what the older ones can do in regards to music. Now, the game does have a few issues. The main issue I had was a surprisingly high encounter rate. Over the last few years, I played a number of games that had this issue. Back in the day, this was used to slow down the game and extend playtime. The prior games had high encounter rates too, but holy crap, this game takes it overboard. You can barely take two steps before being attacked by a group of dogs with swords or elves that want to shank you. This majorly slows down the game and can make even walking across the room a major chore. Fortunately, I was playing this on an emulator and the fast forward button became my best friend. But good lord, I can imagine this irritating the crap out of people back then. I did run into one major glitch where the main character's magic was replaced by another's. This was a major issue as it got rid of my teleportation and fusion magic. Not sure if this was a problem with the main game or a result of the emulation process. I couldn't figure out how to fix it, so I had to use a previous save file and replay this section to get my magic back. 
Speaking of, the magic system confused me a bit. At first, my magic did like no damage at all. Later on, while messing with menus, I realized you had to select the spell and assign how much MP it would use. The more MP, the more powerful the spell became. While a unique system that does open the door for some neat customization, it would have been nice if the game explained you had to do that to do any damage. Despite these issues, overall, I really enjoyed Megami Tensei Gaiden Last Bible 3. It has a fun combat and monster recruiting system, will last you around 60 hours, and has a story that makes you feel for the characters and may cause slight depression. This is a true hidden gem for the SNES. I highly recommend this game to fans of the Last Bible series, as well as to those that want a good, meaty SNES RPG. This game was only released in Japan, but there is a fan translation online. If you want a physical copy, the prices seem to be all over the place. I've seen cartridges only for about 60 bucks, with a box version going for over 300 this has been Mega Blade J. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. I have now reached over 800 subscribers. I cannot believe it. Once again, thank you. It's all thanks to all of you. I just thank you for watching. Thanks for liking. I really do appreciate it. Um, next goal is 900, and then a thousand. I can finally monetize my videos. Yay! But just once again. I want to thank all of you that watch, comment, like. I really do appreciate it. So, if you like this review and are new here, you know, like and subscribe for more reviews, uh, let's plays, and my poor attempt at humor. So, yeah, this has been Mega Blade J. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next mission. Bye. I highly recommend. Blah, 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 blah. You need to convince the monsters to join. Blah, 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 blah. The first game did use some religious imagery. The first game did use some religious image. Blah. The first game did use some religious imagery. Oh my! Im image imagery, imagery, imagery. God, can't say words. This results in CL and his younger brother, Rudy, who is the most adorable and pure-hearted creature in the world, and I will f***ing stab anyone that tries to take his spot away from him. That's stupid, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat>